All right, let's blast off and then let's get into it. Your TikTok popped off on public freakout. <laughs> well, it popped off and then they removed it, which is not so great. AI TikTok is glazing and finding your ass. You see this one yet? Events that unfold. Dude, I have not seen it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where is it? Oh, here. I just blasted off. Okay, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do it. You know, my personal news is over. Uh, no debates right now because we're only half an hour in. Top of the hour ad breaks will start at the next top of the hour there's only a one minute ad here because we just started we're 30 minutes in as you guys know i don't i don't run a three minute ad break at the top of the hour when we're only 30 minutes in. i only run a one minute ad break when we're only 30 minutes in ucla oh yeah true you did go there i forgot what's wrong with israel cots oh well what happened why are you leaving huh. Murad immediately is like, nope, I'm out. Erdoğan, Osmanlı İmparatorluğunu yeniden kurmayı hayal ediyor. Bugün parlamento arası Kudüs platformu konferansında İsrail'e yönelik saldırılarını ve karamalarını sürdürdü. What's he? Why is he? Why is this guy speaking Turkish? And also has like an AI Erdoğan dreaming that he is. Why are the God AI footage is so stupid, bro? AI imagery is so dumb because like, why would you dream Z Z Z? Yeah, of course. Shout out to water jugs this year. Oh yeah. Did you see the Tom Brady AI ad? No, there's like a new AI ad every week. Just got out the phone with my mom. It was cordial catching up until she said, so these college protests are crazy, huh? So awful. It's so scary for us. And I was like, I don't know why you want to get into this right now and proceed to argue for 20 minutes. She didn't know about the world central kitchen bombings or even what Rafa is. She just sees Zionist rage bait and immediately jumps on to saying she wants to disown me. That's so funny. Dude, I'm like, I feel like I'm causing a rift in the, in the family structure of young Jews. Uh, around this country where <laughs> I feel a little responsible for the fuck's going on out here. <laughs> like, especially after I disown megaphonics too, but for different reasons. Okay. Let me tell you, this is, this is, come on. You got to give megaphonics his fucking praises here. All right. <laughs> come on. He's not think about it. You know how hard it is for him not to bring up Elon Musk related news. Okay. Tesla's had the downsized 10%. They just had a fucking, they literally this week just had a, a, a massive session where Elon Musk openly had to admit that like, yeah, we're actually not restructuring our assembly line to, to churn out $25,000 vehicles, which was a lie, obviously. So then he followed that up with, but just wait, we're going to have robo taxis, which is another fucking lie. Like Megaphonics has probably been like ugh, white knuckling the entire time this past week. Not even once did he fucking mention Elon Musk. And I, I follow all the latest and greatest in the Elon Musk world. And I know all of this shit. And this motherfucker didn't even mention it one time for the week. He is kind of reformed. Actually, he did try. Oh, he did. Why are you lying, Megaphonics? I'm over here defending your honor. That's crazy. He, he mentioned Elon Musk in a reply tweet to me. Don't worry, he gets it out in other methods. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, he's I can't I can't stop him from tweeting. He's gonna that's that's his free speech, dude. He's gonna have to tweet. Look, telling Megaphonics that he's not allowed to tweet about Elon Musk would be like putting a gun to his head at that point. It's like that is out of control. You know what I mean? No, he can do whatever he wants on Twitter. <laughs> Recovery isn't linear. <laughs> yeah, my man, you literally are causing a rift though. My mom kind of hates me now. It'll it'll get better, chatters. It will. Um, your parents love you. They're not going to disown you over Israel. What? Oh, you found it. Let's go. Your parents are not going to fucking disown you over Israel. That's insane. Okay. I mean, I don't know. That would be actually the most nuttiest thing uh, <laughs> for a parent to be like, yeah, I gave you life, but also I really love Israel's apartheid. Like, <laughs> you don't understand. I kind of like Israel's apartheid more than I like you. Yeah, you have to remember parents have a parents have a reset button. As Megaphonics also correctly pointed out. <laughs> That's the funniest part. Literally the next day she called me like nothing happened. It's a respawn reset. Yeah, exactly. I guess it depends. Yeah, it depends on how much they love you. It depends on like obviously your relationship with them. I can't speak on it, but like I have a healthy relationship with my family, even though we have disagreements on politics, especially. You forget my mom said she drove me in the entire blog if I was held hostage by a school shooter. That, this is true, but ultimately it'll be fine. I thought you said your your parents are lawyers. That's 
it's gonna they're debate perverts okay they that's not because they love israel that's because they're debate perverts lawyers are debate perverts i never said that i thought you did say that i feel like never mind i'm not gonna i'm not gonna dig into this further all right anyway let's move on from uh random chatters and their parents okay <clears throat> What is this? Our queen from last night, Nicole, was on TV. Yeah, God, I let me just get started by talking about the UCLA campus protests. OK, for those of you who weren't in here last night, I went to UCLA. Go Bruins. It is a campus that I've actually lived in. In the past. Um, so it's uh, it's uh, close to me. For a personal reason, my brother went there for his master's. I think UCLA is a wonderful institution overall. And the students there are doing something phenomenal. Uh, much like all around the country, the students at UCLA have set up an encampment with five major demands that they're making. Most importantly, the most salient ones being obviously divestment. The, UCL, uh, the UCLA structure... A UC structure is massive, but UCLA in particular, I think it might be the, yeah, um, hold on, let's see. Uh, yeah, the UC structure in and of itself has $169 billion. UCLA specifically has an endowment of $6.7 billion. And um, that a lot of the, uh, a lot of that has no transparency whatsoever. What that means is like, it's basically a massive slush fund that, uh, the, the, the university operates like a hedge fund, not dissimilar to a hedge fund that, um, will go and make investment choices. Now, obviously, obviously divestment is not a new concept at all. Uh, divestment means, uh, to, to no longer invest in certain fields. I talked about this at the protest yesterday as well, but it bears repeating divestment please stop sheltered rose but i'm talking about something else okay i okay thank you for saying you're campaigning for pvda the most left-wing party here in belgium yesterday we attended a debate and the politician who represented us constantly interrupted and belittled on top of that the audience was insanely right wing and the social democrats criticized us too we were all feeling dejected by your IRL stream and ucla really cheered me up thanks for encouraging me okay congratulations i'm proud of you keep doing uh the right thing okay and i'm glad that you felt uh inspired and you felt uh, confident after yesterday's stream. Okay, let me talk about this real quick. Okay, all right. Divestment is something that isn't really new. It's been done for, obviously, uh, in the past, it's been done successfully against apartheid South Africa as well. However, divestment occurs not in not just for, like, um, global war and, and apartheid and unjustifiable hierarchies implemented by other states or whatever. Divestment can also occur in the form of climate change. As a matter of fact, a lot of these financial institutions uh, get, have, have genuinely, in an effort to greenwash and in an effort to, to market themselves as, like, progressive, have divested from fossil fuel companies and the like. Um, these were demands. Uh, a lot of companies have divested from tobacco. A lot of companies have divested. A lot of these uh, hedge funds have divested from tobacco in the past, alcohol sometimes, and um, the latest being, before Israel, the latest being uh, the, the fossil fuel industry in general. It's perfectly reasonable. It's perfectly normal. Don't let anybody tell you that it's like unimaginable and unacceptable and it's never been done before. Many of these colleges, as a matter of fact, very quickly divested from Russian interests and Russian assets. That was never even a talking point. I mean, they did it because they towed the line of the State Department. However, Israel is an ally. Israel is a phenomenally important nation state that uh, for American interests in the region. So, of course, when uh, students demand divestment from uh, funds that facilitate and support the Israeli apartheid regime, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's a big deal. It's not. Don't let anybody try to gaslight you into thinking that it is. So that's the number one major reason for what these students want um the second demand is to provide full transparency for what they're investing in in particular like i said 169 billion dollars overall in the uc system 
And I think it's perfectly valid for the students that pay tuition to get better insight into where they, uh, where their tuition is going. None of this is complicated. Um, these are perfectly reasonable demands. And the silence specifically, number three is and the silence. That is, of course, specifically uh, about um, silencing protesters, silencing students that are in support of Palestinian emancipation. Number four is boycott. And number five is abolish policing on campus. Now, now, hold on. Now, listen, this, these are, I will say, some of these are obviously not going to happen, realistically speaking. But that's not the purpose. The purpose of protest is not to get every single demand. The purpose of the protest is to get as much, uh, as much as the demands met as physically possible, realistically possible, and arrive at a decent middle ground, okay? When you go out as a union, for example, and you demand better wages, fair wages from your bosses, or better benefits packages, you don't get everything that you want unless you're Sean Fain, shouts out to the UAW. Those motherfuckers know how to, pro those motherfuckers know how to strike real good. But in most cases, you, there's going to be a back and forth. Okay? It's going to be a back and forth. So make no mistake. People saying these are ridiculous ideas, they're lying to you. People that say that none of these are going to happen, uh, they, they, will never, they will never meet these demands, they're lying to you. And ultimately, if they don't meet all of their demands, but the university capitulates to, you know, all of these very reasonable demands, um, many of these very reasonable demands, as a matter of fact, um, if, if people turn around and say, you didn't get everything done, do not, do not listen to those naysayers as well. Okay? So that's the situation. That's what's going on. That's why the students are protesting, contrary to what gets uh, cut out and makes its way to mainstream media. The reason why I went to, the reason why I went to the encampment in particular, and I got permission ahead of time from the student organizers was specifically to show you an insider's perspective. A lot of these students are fans of mine. A lot of these organizers are, are members of this community as well. And, uh, and obviously, for that reason, they trusted me to not be a dipshit with a camera. If you noticed, there were very few people inside of the encampment with cameras. They deliberately do not allow people with cameras to go inside of the encampment. Okay? <laughs> for obvious reasons. For good reason, as a matter of fact. They don't want people with cameras to go in and try to dock students. That's a deliberate thing. That is a deliberate attempt by many Zionist groups that go in to, one, agitate, and also simultaneously inevitably dox these students for the crime in their eyes of protesting against the state of Israel, which is unimaginable. So I wanted to, I wanted to show you guys, and hopefully I, I do know that there's a lot of journalists that are in this community as well that watch, that will uh, hit my management up regularly. They all can use the footage as well if they would like to show a different side of the protests an insider's perspective from how these protests work. And I think we did that. We did a phenomenal job of showcasing that yesterday, especially by showing you the vibes overall in the protests early on. Everything was phenomenal. It was great, positive attitude overall. People are chilling. People are having fun. Um, they're singing. They're dancing. They're playing soccer. Um, they got their tents, they got food, they're super well organized. And then we found out, like you, you literally saw the change. We found out that there was a counter protest set up by um, the, the uh, students, uh, some of the students, but mostly just uh, outsiders that aren't even uh, college age at all, and their children in some instances, uh, that came. There was a counter protest, there was a Zionist counter protest set up. Immediately when the Zionist counter protest was set up, Police formed a line, and to the credit of the university, 
The police actually set up a line outside of the encampment, putting their backs to the encampment and facing outward at the counter protesters. Normally, this is not just simply symbolic. Normally, in most circumstances, the roles are reversed. Police are, if the police are turned at the encampment and turn their backs to the counter protesters, that oftentimes spells trouble, okay? That's something you need to understand. That means that they're there to break the actual uh, encampment. This was not LAPD. It was campus police, and it wasn't like regular campus police either. It was like the the least militarized version of campus police. It was the bike cops and shit. So they, I will say, that is a directive from the institute, uh, even though, as far as I understand, UCLA shut down both of the buildings surrounding the encampment and also on top of that shut off the Wi-Fi in that area so that the students themselves could not uh, continue with their midterms. That's what UCLA's uh, term for fi uh, finals is. This is midterms week right now. They have quarters. But um, yeah, here was the, uh, here was so the moment where we found out. This is the uh, flyer that they were running around. Emergency rally at UCLA today. April 25th at 6 p.m. Please show up and show your support. Stand with Jewish students. Meet in front of UCLA Library. Hashtag stand with Israel. Let's shut it down. United Jewish Coalition. So the United Jewish Coalition is like uh, campus, uh, uh, campus organizers, Hillel and the like, as far as I understand. However, midterms is not finals. Midterms is a test in the middle of the quarter. Okay, whatever. They have midterms in the middle of the quarter. Doesn't matter. My point is... Uh, my point is that they were there to disrupt, and you saw that. Throughout the day, uh, a lot of the Zionist counter-protesters would try to break into the encampment, break into the encampment, and, like, either physically assault the, the uh, protesters or break into the encampment. And, and this, is what I heard from, uh, this is what I heard from Lolo. Apparently, their goal overall... And without a shred of irony, I'm explaining this to you. The goal overall was to break into the encampment and set up their own tents in the middle of the encampment. They wanted, the Israel defenders wanted to Israel the pro Palestinian encampment. They wanted to colonize the pro, they wanted to settle and colonize the pro Palestinian encampment. I'm sorry. But that is so fucking insane to me that, like, you are so goddamn one note and so used to doing this kind of thing, and you are so used to getting police help, like help from the military to do such things that you thought you could do, <laughs> that you thought you could fucking do Israel shit in the middle of uh, in the middle of the UCLA campus, I don't know what to tell you. I guess I admire the moral consistency inside of their own immorality, inside of their own little, neat little logical bubble that they've created. They have decided that they can, you know, do the thing that Israel does in the defense of Israel anywhere they go. It's like the meme, Mom, can we go to the West Bank? And she goes, we have the West Bank at home. Yeah. Here's an example of what I was talking about, by the way. Um, there is more to this, uh, but I believe, I believe this was his, uh, this was his own banner. And uh, one of the organizers was taking the banner away. But this is one of the this is one of the guys who snuck into the Gaza Solidarity and Cabinet at UCLA and started putting his hands on multiple people. Trying to provoke protesters. Oh wait, it's not. Maybe it wasn't his. It was her uh, banner potentially. I don't know. We know who this guy is. We know who this guy is. And let me tell you, he does not go to the school. That's the dude who I called a broke boy. Okay. Uh, 
Um, here it is. Uh, am I crazy or is the guy in the black with the white shoes the same guy in this video? It is. <laughs> so we were, we, we went, uh, we wanted to help out as best as we could. And the students were like, we need big bodies to carry heavy stuff. Shouts out to the Hasanabi heads who helped me out midway, by the way. Uh, because god damn, I was like, yeah, no, I'll carry this fucking big old thing. It was like a couple hundred pounds. Okay. Little tiny. <laughs> <laughs> I know I bought it <laughs> so I'm carrying this thing and these two dickheads are leaving the, the counter protest and this one says this, little, this big old dickhead right here this little tubby boy he says oh if you there's free food if you, uh, if you say you're uh, you know if you say you're free Palestine if you say you're for Palestine um, they'll give you free food because he's like, oh, these are broke college students. You know what I mean? Captain Zionism over here. <laughs> so I said, I know I bought it. I'm good, brother. Thank you. <laughs> and he said, want me to reimburse you your money? Now, obviously, it's a gross thing to fucking say. Right? It's just like, you guys are broke, I'm rich, blah, blah, blah. It is, however, pretty funny to say it to me, a person who has been canceled fucking endlessly for having money. Like, literally all the time. So I'm probably the worst person to be like, haha, yeah, dude, let's go ban for ban, brother. My daddy is super rich. My daddy has a used car dealership. You know what I mean? the worst motherfucker to say that to but he doesn't know that so i said i'm good brother when he said i'll reimburse you want me to reimburse you i'm good brother thank sure. you <laughs> also i just want to point out my lats are out of control for those of you who are unfamiliar with how yacked i have become you can literally see my motherfucking lats poking through this baggy ass jacket that i'm wearing I just want to point that out really quickly. Like, not the flex, but goddamn. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit is out of control. Be for real. Be for fucking real, dude. You know how this shit, you know how these muscles grew? Because I've been defending Palestine. That's how. If you want to get muscles like this, you got to hit the gym. And you have to always and unconditionally support Palestinian emancipation. That's, a, that's an irrelevant point, but I do have to... Excuse me, I do have to flex on the haters a little bit because, whoo, whoo, god damn, son. Anyway, just, just a little bit of that, okay? Abs are for the meth heads, labs, uh, lats and shoulders are for the gym rats. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, this, this only happened as a consequence of uh, trying to free Palestine. For those of you who are wondering, like, how do you... How do you get fucking Hassan? How do you get lats and how do you get shoulders like that? How do you get muscles like that? It's because of it's because of uh, uh, working to to uh, emancipate the Palestinians, free them of their uh, horrible conditions. Just saying. Anyway, so I'm carrying this fucking big old thing that uh, we're gonna put in in one of the entry points. Okay, my mother watches this stream. Well, shouts out to your mom. What's up? Uh, broke boy. <laughs> so I called him a broke boy while walking and carrying this. Okay. I, I called him a broke boy while, while walking and carrying this fucking big old thing. And he was like, I'll buy your whole family. I'll buy your whole family. Anyway, that was, a, that was the interaction that I had. That was the interaction that I had with that fucking loser. But, you know, didn't know at the time that that was the loser that was apparently fucking uh, being an asshole. <laughs> Little tiny. Um, also, by the way, shouts out. Shouts out to the anti-Semitism defenders out here. Shouts out to those who are like, you know, anti-Semitism is on the rise. Why? Because of Jews. The puppet masters behind the anti-Semitic protesters george soros right wingers are so funny dude i fucking right wingers can't stop they have to go and do the things that they do okay how do people not get humiliated for acting like that 
when you're a rich, when you're a rich kid, when you're a rich bitch from Los Angeles, growing up in fucking Beverly Hills, uh, surrounded by other dickheads that are also rich in Beverly Hills, and that's all you have is like how much your daddy, like all you have is is all your accomplishments are basically how much your daddy has made. You have nothing going on, so you're a fucking loser, and you talk about how rich you are. That's it. That's what people do. It's one of the grossest things that anybody does to be like, oh, I'm so fucking rich. I'm so fucking rich. It's like, this is something that even the most hardline capitalism lover and defender will despise. It's just very, it's a very gross behavior. It's very insecure. And these guys are demonstrating it once again, you know? But yeah, I mean, what do you expect? Look at this fucking loser. Ugh. But yeah, so that is a big part of the reason why these fucking losers break in to the encampment so they can like put a camera on your face, try to dox a couple students, try to rile them up. Um, Y'all did a great job not giving them attention. What you showed is way more important. Look at every local news station using counter protests to portray the encampment as violent by hyper focusing on 20 seconds from a peaceful 24 hours. Yeah. Shoving match breaks out at UCLA campus. Mini scuffle briefly breaks out during pro Palestine rally. Do you, do you see this dueling protests on UCLA campus? Look at what every single fucking look at what every single local news is doing. Look at the way they're covering it versus you saw the reality with your own two fucking eyes. I'm so glad I went there. This is precisely the reason why I went there. I went there to show you exactly what these students were demanding, what the vibes look like, what it actually what it what was actually happening so that you could with your own two fucking eyes make that real assessment in real time see what the fuck is actually going on see what this was actually about and not get baited by these dumb ass malicious actors in local news trying to cut propaganda okay this is how consent is manufactured this is how it always works that's it that's it and you saw, you saw exactly what happened. The students were phenomenal. They were so well organized. They kept their eyes on the prize. They know exactly what this is about. And that's precisely the reason why they, they obviously limit the communication with mainstream organs that they want to make sure that the people that uh, are, are talking uh, to cameras are actually media liaisons, people that are going to be spokespersons for the encampment. But the media hates that. They're like, why can't we just like, you know, why can't we just exploit uh, college students and like put a fucking camera in the face of someone who's not going to communicate the desires of the encampment to the best of their ability and, and, and we can make a mockery of them? Because that was their fucking goal. That's always their goal. It was actually crazy. I was there yesterday. And as soon as someone pulled up with the Israel flag, the media will flock to them and interview them instantly. Now, let me explain something to you. Okay. I'm, I'm a content creator. I have content brain. Okay. I have content brain too. You think I don't know what pops off? You think I don't know that I, you think I don't know that like going to the counter protesters and asking them a bunch of fucking questions would have actually been uh, much better, much better for content overall, much better for the drama overall. Of course it was, uh, of course it would be, but I had an actual purpose to show you what the fuck was going on. That's why I didn't, put a camera on the faces of all these fucking cloud sharks. You understand? Like these guys are, are not just simply doing this because they're dick riding Israel and want to fucking manufacture consent for Israel and show the Palestinian uh, students as like, uh, or the pro Palestinian students as like dumbasses and silly and stupid and make a mockery of them. There's two different reasons for it. One is obviously the underlying attitude of cutting pro Israel uh, propaganda for sure but the other reason why they're doing it is because yeah this is good content the drama is good content if it bleeds it leads we know this already right so they want these kinds of uh clickbaity moments <sighs> bro every time i own your stream i have no idea what's going on drop it in to say your shoulders look amazing thank you blau but another thing i wanted to mention to you another thing i wanted to mention to you is that the children in gaza see the student protesters okay they see it. They see the fucking solidarity. That's what's really important. 
That's what this is also about. They know that they're not alone. Think about that. They're currently in tents. Okay? They're currently forced to live inside of tents in horrifying conditions that Israel, the apartheid regime, has subjected them to. And in the brief moments where they do have some internet, they do have some electricity, they see the footage coming out of the Western world. They see the solidarity, and they appreciate it. Okay, Bizon also responded. I'm going to show you that, too. Thank you. Pro-Palestinian protests spread to even more college campuses. The protesters now getting a message of support from the people they're fighting for, the children in Gaza. We love the students of Harvard University. We hear the students of Harvard University. We respect the students of your university. Thank you, the students of Columbia University. We respect you. We hear you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Pro-Palestinian protests spread. There you go. There you go. That's what it's about. So fuck everybody that talks shit, okay? Fucking assholes. Anyway, I'm going to put my sh shirt back on. Because I know you guys can't pay attention. It's a serious story. Wanted to let you know. Huh. <sighs> Blau, the Jewish people should be uniquely empathetic to the displacement and destruction of a people. My grandpa, who is Jewish or something, I don't know. I watched the stream on mute. Yeah, Blau's, Blau's grandfather, uh, World War II veteran, right? Jewish World War II vet. Blau's grandpappy, also uh, anti-Zionist, uh, happens to be the oldest Hasanabi head in this community. Shouts out to Blau's grandpa. Um, Even though Blau watches on mute. So... As I was saying, as I was saying, I'm going to show you what Bizon had to say about it as well. Remember, they see it. They see the actions that you're taking. It is not for nothing, okay? Not only is divestment a good practice, not only is it, yeah, I don't understand politics. You're just, okay, Blau, come on. Stop trying to portray yourself as a himbo. But remember, not only is divestment good practice in general, but a show of solidarity from the Western world and the, the children of, of powerful individuals in the Western world that go to these elite institutions, putting their fucking bodies on the line, putting their careers on the line, putting their future prospects on the line with the risk of arrest, with the risk of having their lives be threatened by doxing. They see that. They recognize that. Palestinians, in all of my years of coverage, in all the years that I've talked to Palestinians and all my years of coverage of the Palestinian uh, cause, Palestinians have always brought up awareness as the primary, uh, as the, the, the primary thing that people in the Western world can do because their conditions are that bad. And there is no information about their plight up until now, right? There is no broad awareness of the things that Palestinians are subjected to until now. And here you have... Palestinians recognizing that and celebrating it. So remember, when people get upset at the protests, oh, they blocked the road. Oh, why are they doing these encampments? Oh, let's center the protest, the student protest and the student activism around the, the feelings of agitators and, and direct, direct dick riders of Israel that are perpetrating that fucking violence to the Palestinians. Let's center their feelings uh, in this conversation in the Western world, when mainstream media does that shit, okay, doesn't work. Palestinians see that. Don't listen to the naysayers, okay? Five years old, I've lived my whole life in Gaza Strip and I've never felt top like now. Never. I mean, it's magical feelings running in my veins right now in my head. I'm in Gaza City, in the north of Gaza Strip, rebuilding my city after this genocide is in even started to dream that my friends from Yafa, Haifa, Akka, Al Majdal are returning to their cities after being displaced for 75 years. These young heroes in universities around America and the world are stronger than the last occupation in history. And for the first time in our lives as Palestinians, we hear 
a voice louder than their voices and the sound of their bumps and even stronger than their control in all aspects of our lives. In the 70s, the occupation prime minister said after decades of killing Palestinians, stealing their lands and establishing state of Israel over the lands that the adults will die and children will definitely forget. Wait, is that the greatest remontada in history? Because it's children and youth who are leading the movement now for a free Palestine, putting everything they have on the line to demand justice, an end of the genocide, and a new era of the world, not based on oppression, exploitation, or colonialism. Do you know what the best part is? Demonstrations and calls for boycott in the academic institutions are not limited to a certain people from certain religion, culture, color, race, or maybe economic level. We are all different. So we can no longer be accused of anti-Semitism, serving some agendas from outside. We are just different people calling for the same thing. People to people and people to justice. 200 days of spent escaping death every single minute we're not in vain and those is the least we can all do okay in the face of endless cruelty in the face of endless violence that our state is facilitating a genocide that israel has brought upon this population that does not deserve it nobody deserves ethnic cleansing of course the collective punishment that we, our state, facilitates, the least we can do is say, not in our name, stop fucking funding and facilitating this genocide, stop offering political cover to kill Palestinians uh, without any sort of repercussions whatsoever, okay? These kinds of protests, these kinds of demonstrations is the least we can do. It should be the starting point of this conversation. And I guess it, it bears repeating, but I, I had not felt this much hope in, in so many years. It felt like, it almost felt like it was, it was February and the Nevada primaries that happened for Bernie Sanders all over again. Hopefully the outcome won't be as devastating in the aftermath of uh, that, but... You just don't give up the pressure. I know it's going to get hard. It's going to get worse, as a matter of fact, especially as the Israel defender side sees that they do not have the numbers in the face of broad support from the Western world, especially younger generations, finally recognizing Israel's unimaginable cruelty. They're going to look to allies to bring numbers out. Okay? Okay. It's going to get a little bit harder. The agitators and the counter protesters aren't simply going to be rich fucking dickhead fail sons from Beverly Hills like the ones we saw at the UCLA campus protest. Okay? It's going to be Christian Zionists as well. And those guys are fucking nutty. They're insane. We're going to cover them a little bit because they held a counter protest at Columbia University last night. When that happens, it will get a little bit worse for everyone involved. However, that's where the dam will break, in my opinion. That is going to be the most important battle in this otherwise peaceful protest. They probably will not keep it peaceful. The Christian Zionists are used to getting their way. They're used to having the, uh, the, military, uh, the militarized state uh, do their bidding. But every single, every single action that you take in the direction of Palestinian emancipation matters. Okay? 40,000 innocent souls were killed during these days. We're not also in vain. And this is the first time to feel this and to tell you this. Keep going because you're our only hope. And we promise we will hold our ground and tell you the truth always. And please... Don't let their violence scare you. In Arabic, we say, In English, that means... What does it mean? I'm saying, this is what it's all about. Divestment is a reasonable and just demand, but also the Palestinians in Gaza see you. They recognize the solidarity. Do not listen to the naysayers and those who seek the center... Those who seek the center... 
those who seek to center the attention on the feelings of Zionist counter protesters. It means they're cornered, their back is against the wall, is a literal translation. Center attention on the feelings of Zionist counter protesters. But yeah, I guess, like I said, the final note I wanted to say was the feelings that I had last night. Uh, Lolo had some choice words as well. But basically, uh, I I felt hope. Like I'm a I'm a real I'm a pessimistic dude. You guys know, okay? You guys know that I, I my brain is broken. I'm a brain rotted individual. I'm a brain broken individual. I mean that doesn't stop me from you know doing the right things. That doesn't stop me from from fighting for what I believe is right, what I believe is just. However, having said that, actually going out there, actually seeing the students, actually hearing their own personal experiences, talking to you guys in the chat, but in person, in the real world, it, it inspires me. It reminds me why I do what I do. It, it gives me so much confidence. Okay, it gives me so much confidence. It gives me so much hope. Like I said, I met some of the kindest, most amazing student activists tonight, and it filled my heart with so much hope. I highly suggest attending a protest sometime in the midst of all the pain. The future seems brighter than it did yesterday. Yeah, it was amazing. It really was. Lolo said, our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent and all will be lost. I think he also posted the Incredible. ending. All right. And that's it, folks. Lolo, you got some final words after that? It's going to be hard to follow. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it... Watch out, watch out, watch out. Sorry. Um, it's very uh, inspiring to be here. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, don't zoom up on his face, dude. <laughs> yeah. nah, he got close. Listen, listen. He got close. Listen. This is what it's about, okay? Fuck all the haters. Fuck all the naysayers. This right here is what it's about. Do you understand? There's going to be, in life, there's going to be people that say, fuck you. You're wrong. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. As long as you know that your cause is just, keep pushing. And that's it. I would have never imagined this much of a fucking crowd at a college campus anywhere in solidarity with the Palestinians in my whole fucking life. I never would have ever thought I would see this day. And I didn't stop advancing. I did not stop advocating for the cause. And now I don't feel lonely. I don't feel as lonely anymore. And that's because of you guys. That's because of you in the chat. That's because of all of these people out here that are putting their bodies on the line that are putting their careers on the line, that are facing possible doxing, facing assault, facing being brutally fucking arrested for doing what is right. So I hope that you can continue advocating for the right things. All right? Love you all, and I'll see you tomorrow. All right, chat? Free Palestine. Free Palestine. Yep. <sighs> Exactly a month ago, I asked you why this is not stopping, and you told me, just don't stop raising your voice. That is all we can do now, and I see hope. Thank you so much, Hassan. Of course. And thank you guys as well for doing your part. I need you to remember something. What do we have to say to that? I mean, it's pretty funny. Uh, I need you guys to remember something. Okay? I need you to remember something very important. At the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break, and if you no longer want to see those ads... All you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. 
Okay? That's right. All you need to do, you can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. <laughs> Come on, I can't be that emotional. I can't, I can't keep the, I cannot, I have to break it. I have to break it apart a little bit. You know, you know how I am. I'm not going to sit here and, and continue the, the mushy gushy shit. Wait, are they really saying you stole pizza? They're joking. Someone bought pizza for the UCLA brothers and Hassan the Hun came and took it all. I can't believe his fans still think he's a good person. Um, Pookie, they're trying to community notes for this. I'm trying to be on PolitiFact. Yeah. Uh, rich people uh, buying their way out of having to do real activism. Here, I did my part, guys. I spent a few hundred bucks on pizza. A drop in the bucket of my wealth. See you later. Keep up the good fight. Free Palestine. It's like, what has this guy done? I saw this. <laughs> this guy's been just linking everybody how to suck your own dick <laughs> as an article. Couple things to remember. I reiterated this quite a bit when I was there. When I was talking to many of you in the chat that were out there putting your bodies on the line. I am one man. What I do, what I do is nothing. If not, if, if devoid of a community, okay? If I don't have you guys actually listen and actually uh, put my words into action, internalize it, understand it, figure it out on your own, do the reading, do the activism, go out and unionize your workplace, go out and attend protests, become community organizers, become student organizers, engage in activism. If I, if I could not motivate you to do that, then this would be meaningless at the end of the day. It would simply be entertainment, okay? And there are many out there who actually do this simply for the entertainment. You can usually get a better glance of like what their framework looks like from what they cover for the most part. Those who see the next big thing as another possible opportunity to engage in debates. And, uh, and if it wasn't for Palestine, they'd be talking about ethical child pornography or whatever the fuck. You know exactly who I'm talking about. Those guys are just doing it because... They don't have a stake. They don't have a dog in the fight. They don't really care about the humanity. They don't really care about the victims of Israel's actions. They don't care about it at all. They care about the drama and they care about the clicks and they care about farming this kind of stuff for their own personal benefit. And those very same people, because of my literal endless support and, and consistent coverage on the matter, were making fun of me, saying that my community had fallen apart saying that I was dying, saying that I was falling off, saying that it was like hurting my feelings and I was suicidal or some shit, okay? Which is ironic because while a big chunk of this community did fucking leave in the aftermath of October 7 because they just simply saw the, the brutal images and those images were brutal, the atrocities of October 7 and could not understand how someone that they trusted as a progressive figure would be on the side of these barbarians in their minds, okay? That they could not, they, their, their cognitive biases kicked in and they could not comprehend the larger, the larger slant of justice and what is due for the Palestinians. And I understand if you've learned everything a, a, a very different way your whole life, especially as it pertains to Israel, you are going to be resistant to that, resistant to that kind of, commentary but a lot of people left for that reason that did not stop me that did not cause me to say you know what fuck this i'm not covering this anymore i care about the clicks i care about the fucking views i care about you know i care about making sure that i am as as large of a content creator as possible making as much money as possible and i didn't do that because I've never done that. That's why it's always funny when people say that I'm a fucking grifter. But this is not about me anyway. The reason why I rarely ever talk about this aspect of it, unless I'm directly talking about like some of the consequences of being uh, an advocate for Palestinians, is because there is real pain out there. Okay? 
uh, at the end of the day, I'm still financially uh, comfortable. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm a phenomenally privileged person. I live in West Hollywood. I never have to imagine my entire family being blown apart and living in a fucking tent for six months on end as the rest of the world, the leaders in the Western world, champion my demise, champion the death and destruction and defend it. So for me, it's nothing. It's nothing. What I do is nothing. What we do is nothing in comparison to what those people are experiencing, what the Palestinians are experiencing in Gaza and in the West Bank as well. That's why you have to put your best foot forward. That's why you have to consistently keep up the pressure and consistently advocate for Palestinian emancipation, for the humanity of the Palestinians. You understand? It's the least we can do for them, and they see it. You understand? They see it. Like I said, I'm so proud of all of you guys that are doing your part, all of you that are attending these student protests. I'm so proud of all of you. Okay? You have so many people come to you and tell you how much you inspired them to do activism in the real world, yet the haters are completely ignoring that. Yes, because the haters don't have a fucking stake in this other than cutting content. Like, do you think the drama farming perverts like Willie Mac show or destiny give a single fuck about the dead Palestinian children or the, the uh, student activism that's happening? No, they care about the drama. They want to fucking make money when rent is due. When rent is due, they got to do what they have to do. That's it. They're deeply unserious people. And that works because a lot of people are still on the edges. A lot of people are still very sheltered from the truth. So ultimately, for their audiences, this kind of stuff works really well. They get to still maintain the, the moral presence that like they might be pro-Palestine, they might not be, who knows. But actually, this guy who has a community, this community that is one of the largest pro-Palestinian communities online in the Western world is actually bad. Why are they bad? Because we found a couple clips out of context. That's it. It's not helpful. It's not productive. It's, it's transparent to many. It's transparent to many who do care. Okay? But yeah, a lot of right-wing protesters go to pick fights and record it so they can become mini-celebs too. I've seen it a bunch of times trying to feed into the victim narrative because they're always unpopular enough that they can't feel the significant crowd for a real protest. Yep. Anyway, how's your back, brother? It's great. It's awesome. So, yeah, there's a lot to, to feel optimistic about, okay? There's a lot to feel optimistic about, so let's focus on that. It made me feel great seeing so many students, dude. And I think that it was... Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, it was great. I highly recommend, I highly, highly recommend you guys attend these protests. 100%. Do your part. Um, also shouts out the Hasanabi waiting room. My man, the goat came up to me at the protest and was like, Hey, <laughs> I'm I'm able to um, I was able to pay my tuition here because of your uh your your you know lack of copywriting. Hold on, let me let me close some of these. Oh my god, Ben Shapiro's eyebrows look fucking insane right now. What is happening? Huh. I was a right-leaning paradox playing brainwashed by bad history class moron when I started watching you in 2018. I appreciate the efforts to educate. Hell yeah. Oh, here. This was a wonderful little moment from the protest as well. This is Hasanabi waiting room on Twitch. Also, shouts out to Lesby Rights. I don't know where she is right now. I don't know if she's in the fucking chat or not. But another Hasanabi head, a PSL... P 
PSL Andy, congratulations. They are killing it right now. Uh, sorry if I misgendered them. Someone immediately said they. I don't know if that's the case or not. But, yeah. Lesbian Hasanabi heads rise the fuck up. Also, yeah, like I said, dude, I fucking... Dude, I love, I love this shit, okay? This is, this is extremely my shit. This is Hassan I've been waiting room on Twitch. He was able to pay part of his tuition from his channel that replays clips of Hassan streams whenever Hassan is offline. Hassan, I've been waiting room. I was able to pay your tuition, thanks to him. I appreciate you You were able to pay your tuition? Yeah, I was able to pay your tuition, thanks to you not taking off, like, like, having your, like, you're not copywriting your stuff. Do you hear? I appreciate that. There ain't no way. That, that's awesome. That makes me so fucking happy. Yep, there it is. Hey, you paid your tuition off that? You're lying. Part of it. That's crazy. That's awesome. I do get Fox on Telegram, but it doesn't cover all of it. So I yeah, appreciate it a lot. And, yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Hey, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you for being here. That's so sick. Look at that. That's awesome, dude. That makes me so fucking happy. Chatters are showing up. Bro, there's like 600 people there. 200 of them are chatters. That was awesome. Anyway, like I said, fuck the haters, dude. This is what it's about. Fuck the haters. They can make a million fucking drama videos. I will not stop. Okay? And as long as you're here, as long as you're with me, as long as you put the things that we talk about in here into action, then that's what matters. Everything that I do is in advancing exactly this okay sometimes i do shit that you don't understand you're like what why does he play video games why is he doing this collab why is he doing that collab it is to expand outside of the boundaries of this community and to put our bet best foot forward and many others recognize that on the other side and that's why they work in real time around the clock constantly trying to undermine that effort trying to make me into a toxic being trying to basically cast me aside and and uh make make it hard to be openly a fan of mine make it hard to be openly a friend of mine and collaborate but it doesn't work IRL ship poster thank you for the 10 gifted virtual meal thank you for the 10 gifted that patronizing purple hair guy this house belongs to the dude who got his wig snatched by Hassan the other day that's so funny yeah. Huh. You helped me unionize my workplace and help my Zionist coworker get, get my Zionist coworker get fired. Jesus. A new revolutionary icon. Oh yeah, I saw this. Uh water jugs have been doing the most out here. Forest X, thank you for the five gifted. Um Jay, thank you for the five gifted. You streamers want to scream into a vacuum and have kids idolize and glaze them for clout, but what you do is real, it has meaning and value. Yes. I know it. And sometimes, because I'm so fucking brain broken online, sometimes because I'm so brain broken online, I forget that too. So this is great. Attending these sorts of protests is, is seeing the work in action. And it, it, it reminds me why I do this. You know what I mean? Because like, remember, I'm still in my own room. You know what I mean? I'm still in my own fucking room, so I forget. The only thing I see, if the only thing I see is like negative shit about how fake I am, how phony I, I am, how shitty I am, how much of a fucking fake socialist I am. If I look to like the hater communities, they are living in their own goddamn universe, bro. I saw. <laughs> I was looking through it to see what they had to say, if there was anything that like... Sometimes I look through it to see if there's like anything that happened that is like a clippable moment that was like clipped out of context to gear myself up for the inevitable onslaught that will occur. And I'll, I'll peek in there every now and then. And I'm like, oh my God, they're on a fucking entirely different universe. And it's so funny because on that entirely separate universe that those guys are in, 
they have created such a ridiculous echo chamber. They have created such a ridiculous echo chamber, especially on Reddit, that like they're voluntarily misleading one another. And I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a shared, uh, uh, like there's a, there's a feeling, uh, a sense of community that comes out of that. And like all these memes that come out of all of that. So you feel good. Like you feel like you belong, but ultimately you're, you're not even engaging in these ideas at that point. You're just like completely, what is this? Oh yeah. Notice how, okay. Look at this. Four hours ago, someone submitted one of Assange's community members was able to partially pay their tuition by replaying clips of Assange streams on YouTube. 46% upvoted. Parasites, dude. Literally swarm any kind of fucking mention and try to do everything they can. W capitalism. God, I love capitalism. Now, here's a positive Austin Hobby clip. There you go. It's one of those things where I'm like, I don't agree with this guy on a lot of things. It's more of a matter on how he conducts himself, but he has the right attitude. Yeah. Fun fact, the president was participating in the Kip clip, uh, clip kept calling for an intifada, very anti-war protest. I just need you to understand something. They will keep doing this kind of shit over and over and over again. Okay? They will keep doing this kind of shit because they're trying to do their best. They're just trying to do their best. And if they can't actually change um if they can't actually make fun of or or uh like legitimately change the attitude in public discourse then the best they can do is just like talk shit an example i was uh going to give you is you know the classic they're making fun of me for reading the poem uh and just like talking shit yeah, this was the this was the moment that they clipped. Hassan and Prozis complain about agitator not being a student, only to realize the person next to them isn't a student either. That's the takeaway from two hours of the protest. Why do you do this for free? I don't understand it. Why do you do that for free? I was at the police attack at Emory University yesterday, and I watched my classmates getting hauled off in prison vans for peacefully protesting on the quad. We protested peacefully all together for the rest of the day, and we're going to continue protesting today. Congre hey, keep up the good work, chatter. I know you all will never see this, but I got three, tear gas three times today. I wanted to cry when I saw how our camp, campus remains steadfast despite the repression. I want to thank you both for your unconditional support of student organizers. Oh, yeah, I wanted to show you guys the... Guys, the, way, the reason why that doesn't work is because the greatest, the greatest potion, the greatest counter to edgy nihilism that thrives online in sheltered communities that will never, ever dare to legitimately do something that might cause them harm for the right cause. The greatest way to counter that is by actually doing the right thing. Hope is the antidote, exactly. And the more they see the tide change, the more they start recognizing that maybe they are on the wrong side of history the more they'll fling randomly the more they'll try to grab on to anything and everything they can and try to pump it try to brigade it it's desperation that's all it is it's desperation these are the desperate last gasps that's why you have to keep up the positive energy. That's why you have to keep up the hope. And that's why you have to keep putting your best foot forward no matter what. <sighs> now let's look at some fucking memes before we get to the... Oh, here, and I'll, I'll show you another house and I'll be here real quick. Hi, my name is Bella. I'm a senior at Emory University. Uh, today we were trying to build an encampment. This is the first time we were uh, trying to build it. There were students from all uh, sorts of backgrounds across the university and we were out here just chanting pretty peacefully. Um, there were some folks that were trying to march but then all of a sudden a huge patrol of police, many types of polices 
uh, from Georgia, from uh, Decatur, etc., all came in and basically swarmed uh, the entire crowd. They demanded that we be on the sidewalk. Um, some of us did get on the sidewalk, but uh, despite that, there were people on the sidewalk that were still arrested. Um, I noticed throughout everything that was happening that uh, students of color were targeted uh, significantly throughout the process. There were black students that were being tased, there were black students that were um, being uh, tear gassed, etc. I got tear gassed as I was trying to leave uh, the protest. They didn't even allow us to leave and they forced us to uh, keep our stuff behind. So. This has been a, a crazy uh, situation and we did not want it to go this way. And uh, the excuse that the university has given so far is that we are outside agitators. This never works historically, okay? History will vindicate us, okay? Always and forever. We have to keep believing that that History does slant towards justice and emancipation, okay? It is that revolutionary optimism that you have to maintain at every moment, regardless of how sad you seem, regardless of how dire the conditions look like. And the conditions do look awful all the time as contradictions worsen. But that's it. You can be realistic. And you can find different things that motivate you. I think spite is also a big motivator. For me, it certainly plays a role, I think. Like, I'm a very stubborn person. I'm a very spiteful person. And I think a lot of people don't understand that when they do this kind of desperate attempt at being like, yeah, these guys actually fucking suck. Lol. Oh, my God. See, the... There was an outside person in the encampment. Lol, we got him. You know, when they say stuff like that, they think that it, it works, but it works in the exact opposite way. It makes me only... I would have quit a long fucking time ago, okay? Would have quit a long fucking time ago, but I will never give a dub to those pieces of shit. That desperately want to see me quiet down. Thoughts on rumors of George Soros funding the bad actors to spread Jewish hate, if true? <laughs> what a loaded question. Um, anyway, revolutionary optimism, but also jug meme song. Okay, we'll do that in a second. Shouts out to Bella. Shouts out to all the Hasanabi heads out there. Okay. What is this? The greatest... Another Hasanabi hit you met yesterday. Oh, you want to cost money? Nice to meet you, man. Nice to you oh, Western Bing. Thank you, Bing. Like, uh, thank you for being here. I was at one point one of your top 100 chatters, so like, I am eternally <laughs> grateful. I got a life. Oh, I got a full time job. Yeah. I, got a, I graduated college. But, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Western Bing and Chad, I send you links all oh, the time. Oh, yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, man. Uh, Hell yeah. This is great. Like, Black Hasanabi has rise up. Let's go. 13% in the chat, let's go. Hey. <laughs> it's a little bit less now, but hey, we're working on it. No, but like, it's so multicultural. When I got here, they were doing Seder, and those fucking losers over here were yelling over the Seder. So that just shows how much they care about, you know, what they say they care about. I just want to antagonize. It is what it is, you know? Yeah. No, losers, and we're doing what we yeah, if it if this wasn't like a student encampment and it's like such a hot button issue for the media to seize on, now that you guys saw like what actually happened, counter protesters rolled up, they tried to swarm the encampment with the stated purpose of trying to set up their own occupied like try to set up their own occupation, their little Israel, I guess, their little West Bank occupation. They tried to settle where the pro-Palestinian protests were occurring, um, you saw how quickly, you saw how quickly those fucking students immediately, immediately created a human wall around the encampment. How fucking insane was that, dude? And yet, and yet, the media coverage on the matter, as I showed you earlier, hyper-focuses on the the uh zionist counter protesters and uh and and how there were clashes at the protest 
Just for the record, Western Bing is still top 31 and number 31 in the top chat. You got the pizza guys fucked up. Yeah, I uh, I I asked what kind of pizza the the the students will want, and the dude there said Domino's because he didn't know it was on the BDS list. Luckily, Fizz came in last second. Fizz came in last second, uh, informed Brett Cinemarxism that it was BDS. So I had to fucking cancel it last second after ordering it and then order from a place that wasn't on the BDS list, which is fine. It's all, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that was good. It was a clutch. It was a clutch moment. Chat was screaming at you, bro. How would I see chat? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm doing a fucking IRL stream at a goddamn student encampment. Obviously, <laughs> obviously I'm not going to see this. This was an incredible meme. Representative Brian Mass, who would win? Anti-Semitic protests or sprinklers? <laughs> Uncle Authority says, not everybody's legs rust, bro. Guys, do not laugh at this. It is not funny to make fun of dudes who got both their legs blown off and a finger and a finger, index finger, lest you forget. While destabilizing the Middle East, the real tragedy is that we're stuck listening to the dumber half. That's awesome. <laughs> you got a W mention on a Norman video. Oh, I saw this. Okay, we'll get to the student protest. It was Madam Webb is astoundingly bad? Heal Sims. And he's the bad guy in this movie. When I say I fucked your mom, you best believe I actually fucked your mom. He says this to her. I agreed to provide security for you because I thought, I thought you were close to finding the spider. What? Why would he say that to her? I got a nice little uh, Normie mention. Shouts out to those guys. Bro was spamming for two hours for a five second mention. It's fine. I like the Easter eggs like that. That's great. Uh, do you plan on going to more student presence if they allow you to? Sure. Liberals keep going after protests in the most gross, disingenuous ways. While you were occupied with rich kids and watermelons on Ivy League campuses being ridiculous, cops were still killing black people for no reason. Wait, what? Latest mo uh, body camera footage from Canton, Ohio. Police officer shows kneeling on the back of Frank Tyson, 53 year old black man. What is happening? Is that like. Rich kids and watermelons on Ivy. I don't know if this person is saying that, like, that the protests are bad. I mean, they're, they're definitely not pro-Palestinian protests, it seems. Seems like oppression Olympics a little bit. Which is wild because, like, the oppression Olympic stuff doesn't really work when you're talking about the Palestinian plight. You know what I mean? The fuck do you mean? It's just like, it's a group of people that are objectively in the worst conditions overall on the fucking planet. Like, you shouldn't do that anyway. You shouldn't pit other victims of, of military and, like, other victims of state violence against uh, global victims of state violence across the board. It's just such an odd thing to, to try and do. This you in the Gaza MIT solidarity encampment. Oh my God. Oh my God, bro. They literally, dude, they can't stop. People who defend Israel have to do settler shit. Okay. People who defend Israel have to be like, all right, I'm settling in this fucking Burger King. I'm sorry, it is what it is, but I have to do a settlement here, okay? Very one note, I learned about Palestine on my first day of school. The date was 9-11-2001, and I had the Palestinian mass teacher told us about Israel in the West Bank as September 11 was unfolding. In almost 25 years, never would I have believed that there was this much support for Palestine. I also love that you report Palestine despite losing a bunch of followers, and the poem was fire, don't let the haters get you down. No, I don't give a shit about the haters letting me down. They're not letting me down. I'm saying that I'm recentering... I'm trying to explain the reason why 
I'm trying to explain the reason why they, those guys do the things that they do because they're like completely out of touch, removed from like ever thinking about the humanity, ever thinking about the genuine victims of said violence, state violence. And the only, the only thing they could do is like desperately try to cling on to anything and everything they can to, you know, shift the attention away. You know what I mean? Why was everyone wearing a mask there? Um, two reasons. One, accessibility. And the second reason is because they don't want to get doxxed, which is pretty wild because, like, their mask wearing, like, the students uh, wearing masks is wild because um, that has gotten the likes of Jonathan Greenblatt of the Apartheid Defense League, the ADL, to literally cry and demand that mask wearing be made illegal. Which is insane. He literally is just like, no, you shouldn't be allowed to wear a mask. No. Because they want to dox them. Anyway, here, let's watch uh, the way the media cover. Uh, actually, hold on. What is this? So Israel's an years. apartheid regime. Blonde NPC Emily, another Emily, not the last one, wants to know why Israel is an apartheid. Prepare for a Hassan Piker masterclass. Until nine. I like that apartheid defense league. Yes. <laughs> Uh, the ADL, uh, once known as Anti-Defamation League, is actually just the Apartheid Defense League. Uh, it was that way in the 90s, too, when they literally defended the South African Apartheid. 1967, Israel was an apartheid regime. There was a two-tier criminal justice system. They were subjected to the military court processes and not the civil court processes. That's such a weird... Oh shit, where'd it go? After 1967, they got citizenship. There are obviously still many different social issues that pertain to the Palestinian citizens of Israel. The, however, Israel currently is occupying the West Bank. More than 2 million Palestinians that live in the West Bank. Israel's illegally occupying the West Bank. There are checkpoints, license plates where restrict Palestinian travel. Israeli operations in uh, the West Bank have destroyed Palestinian statehood. Now, of course, all of this is readily available for those who want to learn about it, yourself included. I hope you look it up. But Selim is an Israeli human rights organization which declared Israel to be an apartheid regime in 2021 in the April of 2021. Amnesty International declared Israel okay. to be an apartheid right. regime. I got the TikTok AI accounts supporting me. That's crazy. Basically, the episode appears Morgan. That's such a weird thing to say to someone. Be softer. Be more feminine. How about lick on my nuts? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, TikTok loved the clapbacks. It seems. Events that unfolded on October 7 were atrocities. That much is clear. Those atrocities could have been avoided if Israel was not an apartheid regime. Israel has been an apartheid okay, regime for years. Can you answer how Israel is an apartheid regime? In the because early, you keep repeating that. no, you can't you just chime that. in. You can't just Back chime in. You ask me a question. You want it? Why you ask is me a question, Israel an apartheid regime? I'm going to give you an answer. Because you're repeating Israel these lies. has been an apartheid regime ahead, since please. its inception. Until so? until 1967. Israel was an apartheid regime for the Palestinian citizens of Israel, the Arabs, as you called them. They were there was a two tier criminal justice system. They were subjected to the military court processes and not the civil court processes until 1967. After 1967, they got citizenship. There are obviously still many different social issues that pertain to the Palestinian citizens of Israel, the Arabs that are living in Israel, uh, those who are not Jewish, of course. Um, however, Israel currently is occupying the West Bank. There are more than 2 million Palestinians that live in the West Bank. Israel is illegally occupying the West Bank. There are checkpoints. There are uh, license plates where, but that restrict Palestinian travel. The, the uh, Israeli operations in the West Bank have destroyed Palestinian statehood. Now, of course, all of this is readily available for those who want to learn about it, yourself included. I hope you look it up. B'Tselem is an Israeli human rights organization which declared Israel to be an apartheid regime in 2021, in the April of 2021. Amnesty International declared Israel okay. to be an apartheid right. regime. Okay. Events that okay. unfolded on October 7th. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad that, like, um, I'm glad that there was, like, obviously highlights in the sense that, like, the the heated moments uh were you know were were received positively 
But also in the less heated moments in the beginning, I was able to fill uh, fill that information vacuum with as much as much correct information as possible about the circumstances. <laughs> Do you understand the English language had me rolling? Yeah. Um, we have the video of Ben Gavir too. Me, dude, I can't believe it's you. Thank you for the content. I have a better perspective on the world. You changed my life. Hell yeah. What am I supposed to say, dude? Hassan, you've inspired me so much. You don't know how much your content means to me. I wouldn't be a person. Hassan, smile with a peace sign. Listen, I'm not going to... How, how, how would you receive compliments? Anything else? I can't receive... I don't know how to fucking receive compliments. Y'all are so crazy. I'm awkward, okay? I know. I'm freaking awkward. I'm a freaking awkward guy. Shut the fuck up. Here, let's watch how the media covered. Now that you know, you watched how the protests unfolded. You watched how organized the students were. You knew what their causes. You knew what the reasons for the protests were. Now let's see how the media covered it. Talk about going across town right now to Westwood where hundreds are camping on the campus of UCLA. You are looking at a live picture right now from Sky Fox. It's outside at USC also with camping in the morning. And here we are live right now at UCLA. Fox 11's Matthew Seedorf is there on the ground. Matthew. Christine, Alex, a very different situation than what we were seeing at USC just yesterday. Hundreds of protesters here, and it's very organized. I'll step out of the way, and we're actually right now seeing some counter protesters. You might be able to see uh, the police, campus police here as well, uh, in between the counter protesters and the demonstrators. This, as the camp in, really might be just beginning. A fortified wooden wall surrounds dozens of tents in the center of UCLA's campus. Hundreds of pro-Palestinian students and demonstrators protesting the Israel-Hamas war. We are here because we have a set of demands, including a divestment with our university in UCLA. She was such a badass, by the way. She was constantly keeping me in check, okay? She was literally on me the entire time. She was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Which is good to see, because, like, you don't know. If you don't know who the fuck I am, like, and why should you? If you don't know who the fuck I am, I'm just some random dickhead with a camera running around. Just because I have a kefia on doesn't mean that I'm with the cause, you know? She did not trust your vibes off the bat. Yeah, because, I mean, she's a white lady that... Uh, is is uh, doing the the right thing and being overprotective over the students that are also doing the right thing. She's doing her job. Okay, she was a little aggressive with some other people, but her heart is there. No, it's she's smart. She's right. I think you guys don't understand. Like you know, you know me. If someone doesn't know me. If someone doesn't know me and their job is to protect the students to ensure that there's no outside agitators going in to fuck shit up, uh, like acting in a malicious way, then yeah. I'm some fucking giant random dickhead Twitch streamer. Like, that's, she's doing the right thing, you know? Because we have a set of demands, including a divestment with our university in UCLA. Organizers hear from Students for Justice in Palestine and the UC Divest Coalition at UCLA. It's all about kind of commitment to solidarity. It's all about learning about what's happening in Palestine. It's about providing a safe environment for people who are choosing to be here in community with us. The group's encampment set up early Thursday morning includes a medical tent, library, and media check-in. Outside the walls, occasional heated discussion. Still get the glass just fine, you know, I think. Yeah, no, that's awesome. They couldn't find shit, so they just went to the fucking old-ass counter-protesters. Bro, what college campus is this guy from? When this guy was going to college, black people were not allowed to go to school, man. Which he probably likes. Okay? Youngest Israel defender. The funniest thing is... The funniest thing is, like, these fucking psychos showed up and they brought their fucking kids. They're little, little ass kids, bro. It was so funny to see. It was like, you're either 60 years old or six. 
on the Israel side. Motherfuckers were out here like 54 years old. It's like, bro, how jobless are you? God damn, maybe social security is bad, okay? Maybe, maybe we need to stop this Medicare nonsense and let the olds fucking die out, okay? What the hell's going on? They got too much fucking goddamn time on their hands. Fuck is this? Fuck is this shit? Old man about to throw out a fucking hip defending the American State Department. Uh, even if it did disrupt some people, that might be kind of the point. So if you feel disrupted, um, maybe it allows you to think a little bit more about what's happening. I think this is a shame. Uh, shame that you see late administration. Oh, it's a shame, bitch. You're wearing an IDF t-shirt. Suck my fucking cock, okay? Dumb fuck. Uh, it's a shame. Terrorist cocksucker. Is allowing this to happen. U.S. Civis, a Jewish freshman at UCLA, finds the... Dude, how do you fucking... How? How how do you like the audacity, bro? The audacity to fucking be upset, be offended that people are like, oh, I can't believe, I can't believe that they're not letting Israel do a little bit of a genocide, dude. Oh no, oh no, this reporter is such a fucking loser. What what did he do? Oh yeah yeah yeah, the pro Palestinian protesters are used to like trying to block our photojournalism from recording the camp, their in camp demonstration, bro. Why? Why are you fucking bothering them? They know what your goal is. They've set up media, li media liaisons. It's right there. We saw it. You know the appropriate avenues of trying to fucking communicate with these students. Why are you so desperately trying to fucking put a mic on their faces and try to catch them slipping? You know what I mean? So you can cut coverage to be like, look how much they love Hamas or some shit. Why? Why is your goal not to learn what the demands are? Is so odd, and yet they still were able to cut the propaganda that they wanted to. By the way, here, look. Offensive. The best example is my friends. They don't feel comfortable to walk around school with their neck. Really, you don't feel comfortable walking around school wearing that fucking terrorist shirt? Son of a bitch. Eli seems very sincere. Bro, you wear the IDF shirt at the Palestinian uh, pro-Palestinian encampment specifically to be like. The guys who are killing children out there in Israel, I defend them. That's it. That kid was harassing a professor at the encampment. He seems to be so scared, dude. Look at how scared he is. Guys, look at how scared this guy is. Oh my God. Look at how fucking scared he is, dude. I'm so, I'm so unsafe. I feel so unsafe. In a just world, in a just world, if we, if we truly lived in a just society, yes, those who do actually support the baby murderers would feel a sense of, un, uh, would, would feel a sense of insecurity, a sense of shame at the, at the very most. But we do not live in such a just world. It's a genocide. This is a professor here at UCLA University. Yes, I am, and I'm talking about the truth. It's a genocide. What's your problem? You clearly don't know the definition of a genocide. This I don't is, know. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is a professor. I don't know what the definition of a genocide is. They're fucking, they're literally trying to start their, kickstart their Hasbro media career, dude. It's awesome. Weren't you scared to give a speech to everyone, but would harass chatters to get on webcam Lamau? Calling everyone who supports Israel now terrorists is not reverse, huh? Get a life, Lamau. People need to outrage on Israel because it gets their views back. Ha ha. 16 female California says, yeah, I was terrified of giving a speech. Not because I didn't want to fucking center the attention on myself and in a much broader movement, but because I'm terrified of speaking in public. As you guys famously know, I've never delivered speeches in public before. And I don't currently speak to 25,000 people every fucking day. Good one, chatter. 
40 year old dude in IT? Oh, 100%. 100%. I, I mean, you don't do real praxis. You just enrich yourself. Oh, is this the new meta? They're saying, why didn't you give a speech? Are you scared? Is he wrong? Counter his argument. I just did. Is this what the DGG guys were able to come up with? That's, that's what y'all got. I mean, here. The podium. There's plenty of fucking, there's plenty of speeches I've, I've given. Okay. You can go see for yourself, bitch. You don't do real praxis? Brother, what is real praxis to you? Also, you're not even a fucking... That's not a Palestine protest? What? Can I ask you a real question? Seriously. By the way, I support Palestine. I just think people go far with Israel hate. No, you don't. Shut the fuck up. If you did, you wouldn't be chirping in here. Okay? Let me tell you something. Okay, let me tell you something. Oh, okay, we're done with this one. Is he wrong? Why don't you counter his argument? This guy says. What do you think praxis is? I know, I know that you yourself, I know that you yourself have no real understanding of what praxis is, and you're just simply fucking, you're just simply chirping into the void. Okay. But what do you think, like, putting your money where your mouth is and actually attending a demonstration implies in this circumstance? Okay? What do you want me to do? Rise up in arms? You know, go, go to Gaza? Is that praxis? No, praxis is when you fucking defend Israel unconditionally, okay? Defend Israel unconditionally, get a bunch of, like, media... Get a bunch of media opportunities. Pizza is not praxis. Man, shut the fuck up, hegemonic world peace. Suck my dick. They had a message held back by Automod, by the way. Let's see what he... You support the murder... You support the murder of Jews. Hmm. Yeah. Countless Jewish students came up to me at the protests. And of course, I went there with my friend who's been staying with me, Alex. Another anti-Zionist Jew, but um, of course, I support the murder of Jews. You have no arguments. That's why you have to fucking lie to yourself and to others that will listen to you. It's much easier to just be like, no. It's much easier to just be like, no. No, you're anti-Semitic. It's because you can't defend the unjustifiable the unjustifiable ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. So you have to just fling desperately. Okay? You have, to, you have to swing and miss over and over again. It's not praxis. Straight up lying to themselves. Sad. Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a desperation. Oh, identity politics now? Because Jews are self-hating, you're not racist? Wait, what? Brother, you're the one who brought up that I want to murder Jews or something. Because, and now, wh what are you saying? You're now, you are literally being anti-Semitic in the process of thinking that you're defending Jewish people by being like, yeah, no, if a Jewish person says that Israel's actions have nothing to do with Judaism and that this kind of violence against the Palestinians should not be done in my name, that they're a bad Jew, that they're a self-hating Jew, really? You fucking dog shit anti-Semite fuckbag, suck my dick. That makes no sense? Yeah, it doesn't make, a lot doesn't make sense to you, because you're fucking stupid. Oh my god, Destiny fans are so fucking, they've gotten worse over the years with their arguments. Partially as a consequence of the community becoming dumber and dumber with their rabid anti hassan hatred. This is what I've been trying to fucking explain to people, and they don't understand. If you are in your hug box all day, every day, constantly fermenting with hatred, you end up swinging and missing over and over again, okay? Yeah. You were showcasing the UCLA encampment, and they were liking this yesterday? 
Do Palestinian women count as polyamorous when their husbands continue to leave them for IDF missiles? It's just like, he's so edgy. He's so edgy, dude. He's, he's in defense of state-sponsored genocide. It's so edge. Perhaps this is the reason why the only people in his fucking orbit are those who desperately fucking cling on to a crumb of clout and attention that they will get from his psychopathic sycophant community and everyone he's ever loved has ended up leaving him. Two-time divorce champion. Go hang out with your son, man. What the fuck are you doing? Instead of defending the unjustifiable murder of other people's sons over and over again online with increasingly edgy sentiment, Ooh, it's so 4chan. Ooh, we're so pole. Ooh, we're so edgy. <laughs> That's what happens when you're a fucking whole ass 40 year old with a literal fucking son who is it like at the age where they're like cognizant of your fucking insane behavior. Two time divorce champion running around acting like you're a 14 year old in a fucking forum in 2010. Oof. Yikes. One of your oldest Massive videos has you literally speaking to student protesters. Oh, yeah. Fox News defends Nazis' freedom to protest but attacks students. Oh, yeah. This is actually not even from 2018. I think this is even an older video that I re-uploaded in 2018. Yeah, I've been at this fucking game for quite a time, okay? For quite a while. Yeah. The way centrists now feel emboldened to say... Any level of violent anti-Semitic bullshit, as long as the Jewish people they are attacking are uh, for ceasefire, makes my stomach turn. Like, I was going to eat lunch and now I can't. Sickening. Can we donate to this cause anywhere? I am moved by all the solidarity. I will donate money for the thousands of gallons of kerosene for these brave protesters. Did you see Destiny say the N-word? What, every day? He's too busy saying the N-word on his new podcast? To spend time with the kids? No shot. No, no, no. Dan. Wait. Reading off... The, I already did... There's Notice only one that's Dan up about the threshold. Dan isn't talking to his microphone at all. Even though Dan's talking at the same time as me, you can't even hear him because he's talking away from his microphone like a you fucking could, you, They can hear me. They but... can't hear you, Dan, because you're not even talking into the microphone. Okay. If you do that one more time, I'm going to say the N-word. Is it actually on your channel or his channel? <laughs> it's my channel. <laughs> What's up? What up, nigga? No! <laughs> I'm alive! David! Wait, the guy said that about me 50 times. I can say that. And I use the A. It's fine. Yeah, that's right, Dan. Don't be careful. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, you're going well, down if, you don't, if you're not careful. I don't care. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, well, okay. So sick, man. Ooh, so edgy. Oh, so much edge, bro. So much edge. I don't know how that works. Oh, God. Can we deal with all that edge? Oh, God, I'm about to cut myself on that edge. Oh, so edgy. Mission accomplished, soldier. Return to base. Yeah, obviously nobody gives a shit for the record. You know what I mean? Like, none of the, none of the LSF guys who have, uh, of course, spent countless hours talking about the term worm in Spanish, gusano being like the worst slur or the term cracker like this dude straight up ripped the fucking n-word on lsf he's got 500 upvotes okay 64 percent upvoted every most people are just memeing about it okay remember when i called someone a cracker bitch and they petitioned twitch to ban me for seven days this exact same here let me show you and there's also countless hours of him fucking... He uses the N-word with the hard R all the time, too. He's just like... He's a big... He's a big-time advocate for free speech. That's why. Okay? Remember, the same LSF. Let's see. I, I do want to look at the, the, the way that... Hassan defends his use of racial slurs and calls out destiny. 2.9K upvotes. 2.7k comments even that five months ago i don't know where the og one is i don't know where the the og uh thread is on lsf that one banged i mean obviously that that made the rounds dude 
Just want to say this guy's a very sick, evil piece of shit, spreading a sociopathic and genocidal type of victim mocking humor that will bring America to an extremely dark place if it catches on. Wish the absolute worst for him. <laughs> it's so funny that this community, his community, who has never, a community that is like cultivated around literally being able to say slurs, can so quickly and easily intercept and infiltrate dumbass fucking progressives rad libs in general to be like see this guy's ableist see this guy's doing a fucking uh this guy's doing a bad thing and everyone and and whip up people yeah two of house and obby's chat mods get suspended from twitch for calling a person in master the bad c word look at that 2687 comments i mean now uh, upvotes 88% upvoted two years ago. The reason why, the reason why I'm explaining this is because a lot of stuff can very easily be manipulated on Reddit. And these guys know that and they do it all the time. Okay. That's it. That's it. Dudes who say the N word can fucking run around and, and get people run around and get people banned for saying cracker. Okay. And genuinely act like they are ashamed. They're like very sad. They're very upset. It was the funniest thing that they had to like keep saying the C word instead of cracker for the longest time. And everyone would be like, which C word are you talking about? There's at least eight others before we get to, you know, the, the white one. What is this? It's funny that red apparently men that are given access to child have a higher chance of not actually committing um, actions in real life. And I would argue that that would be a moral good. If you can prevent people from acting on those urges, that's something that should be explored. And again, like some of it, I guess, sounds uncomfortable. Some people like if you're being real, like a 21 year old, 22 year old, like there are some 15, 16 year old chicks that like look pretty fucking hot. Like I can't, I can't help that. Like some people mature fuck. <sighs> gross did you know this i mean i've seen him defend uh the ethics of cp and also lowering the age of consent before but not this specific clip maybe you wouldn't be on live stream fail if you weren't so unhinged you are almost as unhinged as the top of the air break okay well i'll i'll give you that one you already wrote it out and i didn't even see it little bit of a weak one but stormy echoes destiny is cool you're a hypocrite you talk about all the poor people in palestine and socialism but you really you literally are inside of a hundred dollar hundred million dollar mansion the top comment on that one miserable snow is the top hassan hate thread poster on that reddit oh i didn't i like that you guys know the the the individual freaks by username why is your position always CP adjacent? All of my haters is a, is a, it's a rule that never fails. If someone is incredibly obsessed with taking me down, almost always at a certain point in their career or in the future, they will defend some form of ethical CP and also uh, lowering the age of consent. That's just how it works. I don't know why this is the case, but it always happens to be that there are people who want to lower the age of consent that end up hating me and making it their lives mission to quote unquote, take me down. Your lives mission, however, should be the avoidance of the top of the hour ad break like that chowder got me. But anyway, um, this, I had not seen this clip before, but here's a three minute ad break. Now, I don't know if, if, I don't know what the exact context of this clip is, but I have heard him talk about lowering the age of consent before, but yeah, very edgy. Do you still think he's redeemable? No. Um, what, what if someone literally, what if someone makes money being this way? It's very hard to shake them from this position because 
one, they personally like it. And two, it gives them social capital. It gives them clout. It gives them money. Like, this is his career. His career is being this guy. Speaking of Edgy, your co host. Nice. What the fuck is this from? I think for whatever reason, these mercenaries also always go towards pedo shit because it draws a lot of clicks positively and negatively. Well, I mean, I guess. Yeah. This is like spiritually fucked up though. Like having this kind of attitude, it's not healthy. It's not a healthy attitude to have. Of course, obviously, uh, he also spends a shit ton of time finding like whatever random hammer and sickle accounts he can that basically do the role reversal of this against Israel, like Hamas rockets and whatever. Like whenever, whenever some random fucking hammer and sickle account online says like, may Allah guide, you know, Iranian missiles or whatever, he'll make like a three hour video about how violent these uh, defenders of Islam are. You know what I mean? But of course he benefits from Israel being the good guys in the, in the at least state department assessment. Gross stuff overall. Can we go back to not talking about him? He's a fucking lunatic who thrives off drama. He does these tweets for drama. And so people like you scold him for it. No. Um, part of the reason why I uh, do show some of this stuff is because um, he he is going on a shit ton of podcasts. He's becoming more of like a, a, a recognizable name. And when he's uh, when he's a recognizable name, people and people only see the fucking like highlights. People only see like his, I guess, like seemingly reasonable defense of Israel's genocide. He has the capacity to inform people in the wrong direction. And I think they should see the broad swath of, of all things uh, divorcelli related. So, I mean, this is what he has done over and over again in a way that is like totally clipped out of context. And I think it's not bad to show new fans of his what he actually believes. It's not about him in general. But it's more so about like new fans, you know, getting a broader understanding of all of the things that he advocates for. There's no one that defends Hassan and this freak has had the benefit of uh, Hassan ignoring it for four years. Hassan's allowed to punch back. I mean, yeah. His fans literally have the, some of the best media literacy out there. From the river to the sea implies everything from the Jordan uh, to the Mediterranean to be a single Palestinian state. Hamas is the administrator to Gaza, currently enjoys the widest support of any single political entity. Keep protesting louder. Hamas has made a statement and they're standing with us. What the fuck is this? Why are you guys showing me this? I don't even... It's a, Is this, this your man wake up for his freaks? Yeah, there's definitely people who won't fall into the rabbit hole, I'm pretty sure, when they see this kind of stuff and go, maybe his understanding of the matter is like maybe motivated by his incredible virulent uh anti-muslim positions you understand i almost fell into the d rabbit hole two years ago because i wanted to create a with long essays that i can put in the background and he seemed reasonable in the beginning but a few days in i realized how much of a lunatic he is and got a huge ache from him. it's very easy for a good person with good views to fall for him if they're not paying enough attention yeah He's done the same thing for you for years. It was so nice of him. I'm glad you're doing the same for him now. Be generous uh, with your coverage of his sick shit. To be fair, when he did my coverage, it wasn't actually sick shit either. It would literally be like a thing that I don't believe that he espouses as though it's my main belief. And if there's no counter to that from anyone that I have orbiting around my fucking sphere of influence, because I don't have the fucking diehard sick freaks that he does that will do like a 45 minute documentary on YouTube to be like, 
this is why Hassan and Destiny uh, broke up or whatever and just like massaged the narrative in his favor for years and years and years, you arrive at a lot of people who are just completely misinformed about what I believe and think that he is a good guy in general. Anyway. What? I had a friend bring him up not long ago saying he makes good points and I brought up the manifesto and BLM statements. She said, let me look into that. Came back five minutes later with you. Fuck that guy. Yeah. When I talk about destiny, all I need to do is show the things that he believes and the things that he says. When he talks about me, he has to lie and be like, I am sex trafficking in brothels. That's the difference. You understand? Anyway, let's get back to this. He doesn't know the definition of a genocide. What is that? Yeah, tell me. Tell me. It, it's a, a Greek name. It comes from Genos, which is Chinos. And, and you know, Tony, it's like the killing of a whole nation. Okay. That's what it means. Then why has the Palestinian population number only been increasing since 1948? Genuine question. How is that a genocide if the population has only been now, increasing? Who can help me here to answer okay, no, this okay. question? Can you help me? No, I want to help him, actually. You want to help him? Okay, so like, really you, think, you think for 70 years the, the, the Palestinian people have been treated fairly? Have been treated in, in, in a state where they could protect themselves? Yeah, dude. A couple of reasons why the Gazan population has increased. One, because they were pushed into Gaza. And two, an open-air prison does not mean that every single person inside of it is going to die. As a matter of fact, um, having more children oftentimes and having a much younger population oftentimes signals that you are in dire financial circumstances. The more developed the nation is, the, the, less, uh, the less destroyed they are, the worse the population, uh, the population age looks. This is an issue with a country like Japan, for example. China is having its own version of this problem at this moment. The only reason why America has not faced this issue is because of the steady flow of undocumented migrants that have come into this country. <clears throat> also, in order for there to be a genocide under international law, there simply needs to be a genocidal intent and a desire to act out on said genocidal intent and Israel's actions absolutely do fit that standard quite well, as a matter of fact. Isn't it literally an anti-Semitic conspiracy that the Jewish population increased over the years of the Holocaust? Or am I getting my wires crossed? I mean, uh, that originally that was an anti-Semitic uh, conspiracy during the Holocaust. But obviously, 6 million Jews were ruthlessly slaughtered by the Nazis in the Holocaust. So, ironic that Israel defenders are doing the exact same propaganda that Nazis once did while they were also launching their ethnic cleansing campaign. Anyway. We can do the shit deep freaks do too. Compile all the clips of him saying all sorts of deranged shit and spread it online. It's not a problem. A shortage of ammunition regarding D. You should be really careful because we've been shitting. We've been sitting on a pile of D. Oppo researchers waiting to go ahead. I mean, I don't know why you guys haven't fucking uh, showed all of his new fans what he actually believes i don't know why you're not um <laughs> what do you mean it's not like it's not like he's gonna stop being edgy his career relies on him trying to cultivate a following from all of the fucking edgy groipers that have already aged out and have become like 35 year old it guys and shit so he has to keep doing that anyway. It's not like he's going to stop. His fans like that shit. Yeah, but Hamas on October 7th, Hamas caused all this. Hamas is using everyone as human shields. Hamas, joking, obviously. Hamas, oh, okay. Brother, this is a man who wrote a fucking manifesto doubling down on his usage of being able to say the N-word in private, okay? Like, he's not the type that, to go, you know what? Maybe the optics of the way I behave is genuinely awful to most normal people with a conscience. Even if they are technically on my side, I still think that 
Uh, I am probably the grossest person to advocate for these positions. He's exactly the type of toxic content creator that even like, he is basically like a Rabbi Shmuley in the sense that like, while he's vociferously lending support to Israel's genocide, which is already gross in and of itself for many normal people, when they see that they're like, ugh, that's terrible. But beyond that, um, when they see all the other shit that he says on a regular basis, most people are going to be like, well, this is our best guy. This is our champion. Cinematic, thank you for the five gifted subs. My goat. Did they have a choice? The kids that are getting died, the massive graves. Do they have a choice? Do they have a choice? What? You gotta admit that the protests look really bad. They keep getting in the fights and they look really bad when they're being attacked by Hamsaza. Okay, bro, stop trying to fucking, uh, you know. Come on. Enough. Alright, um, so that was one of the, that was one of the agitators. Let's watch, that's him. They take their kippahs off. They try to look as less visibly Jewish as they can because they're worried that one day... You wanna know what's really sad about this? I talked to many Jewish anti-Zionists at that protest, and it was on camera. You guys saw some of them. And one of the most common things that they said was how, like, the, the campus Jewish community had completely parted ways with anyone that wasn't in defense of Israel. That when you're 18 years old and you first go to college like you're looking for a bunch of groups that you can be a part of you're looking for friends and so many of them were excommunicated both from their uh back home from their synagogues for voicing their support for palestinians and also from uh and also from the the campus the the uh a lot of the uh, jewish communities on campus like the community clubs on campus whether it be the halal uh or or many others that like very quickly, they realize that, like, no, you have to be in support of Israel. And there's very few, as far as I understand, at least on UCLA, there's very few, like, Jewish organizations on campus that are even open-minded to uh, anti-Zionist Jews. It's really sad. The major one is Hillel and is directly funded by Israel and hosts the birthright stuff. Is a cult? Yeah. It sucks. So actually, the real harm being conducted on Jewish students on campus is not coming from the pro-Palestinian side. It's actually coming from the pro-Israel side, pushing away young Jewish students that are looking for a sense of community in the most cultish ways possible for not voicing unconditional support to Israel. It's fucking gross. Being part of Hillel ingrained as much, if not more, Zionist prop in me as a sh as Shul did growing up, truly a cult. I was thinking about that, but having said that, I think it just stems from uh, most people being young, not recognizing that there's like, there's more out there than just like, there's more out there than just, you know, Jewish community groups. Stand with us, which this dude is a part of, is a right-leaning Zionist organization that specifically trains students to spread pro-Israel propaganda and inter interact with the media. Stand with us also is funded by the Israeli government. Make no mistake. Stand with us has gotten grants, as far as I understand, from the Israeli Knesset. So when when people say, "What are you talking about?" That's not that's not like that. It's not like that at all. Prime Minister's Office hires Israel Advocacy Group stand with us for 1 million shekels. So just remind yourself of that. When you see someone working with stand with us, remember that the advocacy group is still doing state-sponsored propaganda. Okay? Israel cares very much about its, uh, its Western focus, its Western propaganda. Because the Israeli government, no matter how much they try to fucking flex how strong they are without America or without the West... Israel would be nothing. Israel would never be able to conduct its military operations without the Western go-ahead, without unconditional Western support. And those in positions of power in Israel recognize that reality regardless 
regardless of what they fucking say. Shekel still sounds anti-Semitic as hell to me. Yeah, it's because of the fucking 4chan Groiper Nazis. That's the problem. 4chan Nazis, like, I, I get it. As soon as I hear the word shekel, I'm thinking like, oh, I'm talking to a Nazi. It's an actual currency, but because Nazis are for years and years and years so actively would be like, ooh, the shekels are strong in this one or some shit, that it makes your, your internet brain. It makes you go, wait, what? Shekels? The fuck? It's just the, the currency. Or, yeah, like when someone says Goyim, exactly. If you've been on the internet for, if you've been on the internet since the 2000s, anytime you heard someone say Goyim or Shekels, you're probably encountering the grossest, sweatiest, worst fucking Groiper Nazi you've ever encountered. 4chan neckbeards. Goyim just means non, uh, non-Jew. But it's like, it's, it, it's funny because like if your mind's not rotten, like Goyim means uh, non-Jew and like there's a term, Shabbos Goy, for example. Um, Shabbos Goy is a real term, is a real term for a, a specific purpose. All th uh, or Orthodox Jews who follow uh, Shabbos don't work on Saturdays and they can't use electronic equipment. Uh, there's a bunch of other uh, things in the rule book that they can't uh, engage with, but they can't work. They can't like use any kind of equipment. They can't even like cut bread, I think. And Shabbos Goy is a non-Jewish person that you hire to do those things. Uh, a loophole, basically. Something bad will happen to them. Late Thursday afternoon, the group decided to expand across the quad, pulling material from a nearby construction bin. Just for like student solidarity and solidarity um, in other nations and stuff like that. Media liaison? No, I'm not. Uh, we're trying not to have anyone interviewed That's unless they're with the media. That's perfect. We were with other media trying to speak with supporters as the new walls and shields closed in around us. It's a public space, which is the reason that you guys are here too. We were told we could no longer record. <laughs> More than 90 pro-Palestinian protesters arrested Wednesday on the private campus at nearby rival USC. A spokesperson from UCLA says our top priority is always the safety and well-being of our entire Bruin community. We're actively monitoring the situation to support a peaceful campus environment that respects our community's right to free expression while minimizing disruption to our teaching and learning mission. We go to school to make changes. We go to school and study all these case studies, but if we can't come out of our classrooms and really make a change and really stand in action, then there's no point of being class. Uh, we can hear people with different opinions kind of clashing behind us, but I gotta show you this. So there's room to expand. They've already expanded once in this quad, but it could go even further and it's already kind of cornered off by campus police. You can't really walk through here to come in. You have to walk around in order to get in. So yeah, I wonder why. Zionists radicalize so many by just being themselves. Why am I blocked by this person too? Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, this was a, this was a, this was right after too. This was like October 12th. See Israeli settlers sharing videos, teasing Palestinians inside Gaza. This was a trend on TikTok. Israeli police storms Hadash branch in Nazareth as they prepare for May Day march and arrest multiple people. Oh, not fascist, by the way. Not fascist, guys. The police raided the Hadash branch in Nazareth and arrested a number of activists who were preparing displays and flags for the May Day rally. The rally received permission from the police. Yep. Someone said it best. Exactly. Imperial boomerang. Now, obviously, Hadash uh, knows that already. Uh, so, you know, it's not like they're, this is a lesson that they're learning. But 
I hope that many others outside of the anti-Zionist, uh, uh, marginal anti-Zionist groups within Israel that are openly communist, openly socialist, can recognize that as well. Besides the fact that anti-Semitism is used as a scapegoat, do you think anti-Semitism has actually increased? Oh, fucking absolutely. Absolutely. What you have to remember is this. Most people don't have the... Most people don't have the fucking understanding. Most people don't think about it. They just see Israel being like, we're doing this for Judaism. And then they hear, they hear opportunistic Nazis fucking take advantage of that. They see the opportunistic Nazis taking advantage of that, presenting themselves as pro-Palestinian, and it definitely changes their mind on things. They definitely, they absolutely, most average people don't have the capacity to, to sift through the nuance. We don't have any critical thinking skills. We don't have any fucking media literacy. They see the, they see the Star of David on the flag. They see, they see Israel being like, we're doing this for Judaism. They see all of the counters being like, oh, you're being anti-Semitic. You're being anti-Semitic for saying like, uh, Israel can't kill children. And yeah, of course, what are people supposed to, what, what lessons are people supposed to understand from that? That's why I spend every fucking day round the clock consistently trying desperately. Oftentimes it falls on deaf ears, but desperately try to fucking decouple Zionism with Judaism on a daily fucking basis. It also, it also makes things so much worse when anti-Semitism anti monitors such as the ADL, which are supposed to be doing a very important job, also muddy the waters and bastardize, like dilute real anti-Semitism with a shit ton of of things that are objectively not anti-Semitic. It's so, it's so insane. They made an anti-war mural which had stones on it and barbed wire and the cops say shit like, oh, you can use this to throw up people we're confiscating. This is Ben Gavir's police fascism turn up to fucking 11. Yeah, Hadash, for those of you who don't know, is the party that uh, Ofer Kasev is a part of. Obviously, it's uh, unfortunately one of the marginal parties in Israel known as an Arab party, but it is the, it is the objectively anti-Zionist party. But yeah. On the one hand, they're doing a genocide, an offensive genocide. On the other hand, they're running around and beating the shit out of and confiscating their own fucking uh, peaceful demonstrators who, uh, in, a, in a party that is like gotten official, uh, a party that has gotten like a official go ahead from the government this is an israeli party it's in the israeli knesset hadash is an israeli party within the knesset anyway no i can't see voli bear is israeli they say no i can't say i'm israeli to foreigners after this i'll say i'm from madagascar or some shit which is kind of funny that is so american that's why every american globally will say they're canadian when they're overseas Literally, that is the most American thing that can happen to an Israeli is just like, no, I'm not Israeli. What? It sucks. But yeah, no, it definitely does increase anti-Semitism. Absolutely. Like real anti-Semitism. I'm not talking about fucking bullshit like, oh, there was a free Palestine sign I saw and I got scared. I'm talking like real anti-Semitism. People being like Jews control the media. People thinking that like Jews have some outsized power on the American State Department or the American state because they're powerful, blah, blah, blah, all this shit. Like the shit that I have spent years and years and fucking years railing against. All of that just dropped, gone, poof. It's Jover. People will develop hardened anti Semitic positions. It happens so consistently, too. It happens every single time Israel does some shit. It happens in the margins, but now it, this is the most public display of Israel's wrongdoing, consistent wrongdoing throughout history. Yep, Hadash Ta'al are polling roughly at five mandates right now. 
and are a joint Jewish Arab party. They can't get a word uh, through in the Knesset because people always yell over them. And the head of the Knesset refuses to stop it. There are insane clips of right wing psychos dogpiling on them. Yep. Good job at court today. Hell yeah. Blinken also faced intense pressure from both the members of Congress, including House Speaker Mike Johnson, U.S. Ambassador to Israel Jack Lew, and other senior officials in the administration who opposed the move. The State Department has put on its hold, uh, has put on hold its plan to impose sanctions on the IDF Netza Yehuda Battalion for human rights violations to occupy West Bank and is reviewing the issue in light of information Israel provided. Yeah, we can't even do, we can't even, we can't even sanction one unit, dude. They're investing. They gave us new information that, like, all of the actions were actually just. Anyway. Um, here, let's. Oh, this could be go going for this. some time. It doesn't appear to be ending anytime soon. Reporting live, Matthew Seedorf, Fox 11 News. Matthew, why do so many of the demonstrators who are there to share their perspective cover their faces? That's a great question. It seems like they're not necessarily wanting to be on camera. Uh, we have a demonstrator trying to, trying to speak with us right now, but they're trying to hide their identity for whatever reason that may be. What could it be? What reason could it be? You guys are adults. Alex, I know you personally. I can tell you. You could ask a media liaison officer. You know, there are people there that are willing to talk to media, that are tasked with talking to media. Why are you so desperately trying to talk to random students rather than someone who is an official spokesperson for the protest? Why do we not treat student organizers as though they are actually organized? I asked the same question. First thing I did, it's, it's on video. Am I a fucking professional journalist? No. First thing I did. First thing my media liaison uh, said was, you have to wear a mask in the encampment. I said, why? I know the real answer, but I wanted to ask so that it was on camera. To which she very quickly responded with, it is for one, accessibility purposes, because COVID is still an issue. And two, like, you know, there's like disabled students and whatnot. And two, it's to hide students' faces because they're doxing people. Hasbro trolls go in with cameras specifically to dox students and ruin their fucking lives. Now, if I can arrive at that and I'm a fucking random dickhead, 32 years old, Twitch streamer, out of touch champagne socialist, how the fuck can you not do your due diligence? I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, police film it too. They all give one of the riot gear guys a handheld Sony camera. Yeah. But the thing is, this isn't like Fox News. This is Fox 11. It's a local affiliate. So what's up with that? Why? Why is it up to someone like me to do this job? Why is it that I, a random dickhead Twitch streamer, a champagne socialist, why am I the one? Shouldn't you be doing this? Should you not be doing this? Is this not a part of your job? I think it is. I think you should do your fucking job. And uh, yeah, they don't want to speak and they don't want to show their face on camera. And you get a sense of how many of them are actually students or maybe demonstrators that have been doing demonstrations like this for a long time in the streets of Los Angeles. I think there's a mix. I mean, I think today there's probably more students here than yesterday at USC. That one felt like 50-50. If I had to guess, I'd say this one's about 75% students, uh, at least in the actual encampment itself. Outside that, there's some onlookers and stuff that, you know, I've been seeing this on the news and wanted to come be a part of it. Uh, but generally speaking, I would say mostly inside this camp, uh, we're seeing students. Uh, you can see they No, got the overwhelming majority, it, almost every single person inside of the encampment is a student there was like one or two people that weren't but almost every single person in the encampment is a student on the outside of the encampment that's not the case on the outside of the encampment it is an exact opposite it's the exact opposite where most most of the people outside the encampment were not students and you can see 
<laughs> yeah, one undercover cop as well. Wait, hold on. I'm tech. I'm DMing Alex. Hold on. With the permission of the students. As COVID is still. And also because a lot of counter protesters and the police film the students. Counter protesters so they can individual. This is why organizers are very uh, who they do a phenomenal job keeping agitators out and they keep messaging discipline Okay, dude, don't you love how they're reporting on the mini scuffle, but not the protests that were largely peaceful? Of course not. Hey, security, their own security, and someone looks like inside there right now that they uh, they don't want to have in there. They're chasing around. Well, at this hour, shortly after five o'clock, a much different picture at UCLA compared to yesterday's USC, where police were moving in. LAPD was forming up at about this time, so we'll keep let's, a watch on this let's, situation. Yeah, let's see what's happening here. So our photographer Sam Dubin is is moving in. Clearly, there's something happening yeah it looks like uh so the people in the the yellow and orange vest are kind of the organizers and someone is being uh taken away right now looks like they're filming them as well taking it taken away by who and this is kind of what was these are the organizers in the uh the bright yellow highlighter shirts are they they're performing uh, like a citizen's this arrest this is a well, basically, you're not allowed in there unless you go through their own security department. And this is what happened to us when they expanded. Uh, they expanded kind of where media was standing. And we that was the dude who was yelling at me fucking saying the the two dudes that were walking around uh, when they were leaving. And. Uh, I mean, look how happy he is. Like, first of all, can you not tell that he's like on some fuck shit? Like, I, I, can you just not? You can't even see. This is the brokey who was like, oh, I'll reimburse you. You know what I mean? This is what happened to us when they expanded. Uh, they expanded kind of where media was standing, and we were told we had to leave. And that's when you heard me saying, you know, this is public for us just like it is for you. So I'm wondering with all the tents there, have you whoa, seen? Whoa, whoa. It looks like a little bit of a scuffle there. Behind Come on, that bro. Tent. Don't get yeah. so excited. Yeah, it looks like there is. We're gonna run over this direction and just see kind of what's going on. It He's does so look like stoked. there's a little bit of possible fighting going on here. Wow. Look how excited well, he is, bro. Yesterday at USC, they tried to set up the tents in the morning. They went in at 4 30 in the morning by oh, 5 o'clock at night. You can Those hear the glee in his fucking voice. On, but they had the people chaining themselves arm in arm. Yeah. who were in defiant and, and ready to be arrested. Here you have a lot of tents completely set up as if they're going to be there all night. Well, and so a basically, big Bro, I saw, I saw like eight Hasanabi heads in this video, by the way. So many motherfuckers came up to me after this. <laughs> it looks like a uh, it looks like a counter press protester got inside and they're making him leave. You can see all the people around him uh, kind of making him leave. But he's trying to stay in. Well... Uh, you know, it, it, it is interesting, the difference between UCLA, which is a public school, which does not have gates and is not considered private property, and USC, which is a private school, does now have gates and is considered private property. And they were, you know, much quicker to remove this sort of thing from USC than at UCLA, which is, of course, run by state leaders. And um, they let this... Yeah, look at these virulent anti-Semites, dude. Oh, God, I'm so proud of them. I'm in this video a lot for the last 45 seconds. Yeah, look at... Look at look at our anarchists right there in the corner. Then go for some time, uh, but you, you get a sense of, of some of the animosity 
happening here. I'm wondering, too, as we look yeah, here, Alex. Go, go ahead, Matthew. Yeah, I mean, this is way different than what we were seeing yesterday at USC. Uh, obviously, the police moved in and shut it down. Uh, and it was, you know, peaceful. And I will say this one's been peaceful today. But anytime there's a counter protester around or someone that gets inside this, uh, that's when the demonstrators get upset. I'm trying to read his sign. I don't know if you get a better view of it. It says, come talk. Uh, obviously, we can't show all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just trying to talk, dude. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, let's let's ascribe negative values off the jump to the student protesters like they're fucking dickheads that don't know what's going on and let's also look at the protest sign and go oh he just wants to peacefully talk he just wants to this fucking 40 year old who doesn't go to ucla who came from his beverly hills mansion that his daddy owns came down there just to talk i don't understand signs but sometimes the language on them uh but i do want to wonder i do question what is on his sign there uh matthew if you can and, paint a picture for that israel is not apartheid come talk is what it says so he's trying to, to begin a dialogue about what's happening yeah yeah no definitely that's what he's trying to do he's just trying to do a begin a dialogue dude by the way this is what debate pervers look like irl it's so funny. Oh, look at it. Look who it is. Look who it is in the background. Look who's peeping in the background right there. This morning, seven U.S. rabbis and Israeli activists were arrested by Israeli police at the Gaza border. Oh, yeah, I saw this. This is Omdim Be'achad, right? As a part of a delegation of 30 rabbis and other peace activists with rabbis for ceasefire who were attempting to bring food supplies into Gaza through the Eretz crossing. Yeah. Um, this happened yesterday too, uh, pretty sure. Yesterday, Ombin Be'achad also tried to do this exact same thing, and they were also fucking violently stamped out. So there are people inside of Israel that are trying to do the right thing, but of course, the fucking asshole fascist Israeli Gestapo is doing their fucking best, uh, is, is giving it their all to stop this from happening undercover feds are easy to spot oh come on now you don't got to be like that <laughs> DeSantis pledges to expel all students no, from Florida if they protest Israel dude come on you can't be America first Andes are gonna get mad at this there's no shot Ombin Be'achad was yesterday, yeah. ...line of Israel and Gaza. Hundreds of Jews and Palestinians, all citizens of Israel. And we're here at the exact moment where settlers came all the way from the West Bank to try and build new settlements in Gaza. We're here to say that more settlements, more occupation, more war, this will bring us nothing but more destruction and death, both of Palestinians and of Israelis. We're here to say that only by a ceasefire, by releasing the hostages and ending the war and the occupation, we can really achieve security. We can really have a normal life, both for Palestinians and for Israelis. This is our solution, a solution in which all people will live in safety, independence, equality and freedom. Any other, any other reality will only presume this endless war and will bring the device of Mr. Beast, Mr. Based. <laughs> all yeah. of us in this land. Oh yeah. Here was an undercover cop at the protest. I forgot to mention, bro, that cop was hovering around Hassan and Lol overruled. Yeah. I saw this. I saw this. Bet he was a security and he just won a minute. The guy that reported for being suspicious and got kicked out was actually hired by Hassan. Wow, your brain is amazing. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I brought my own undercover security guy. Why would I fucking have him be undercover? Why wouldn't I literally be like, this is my security? But anyway. Yeah, he was just like constantly looking at us and I noticed it. And he was just standing. He was just hovering around us. And I noticed it and I was like, that guy's an undercover cop. I caught you. <laughs> Good one. 
I was like, that motherfucker's an undercover cop. And I told Lolo, and I guess he like told the organizers and they kicked him out. There's too much, there's too much scary stuff. They're saying an intifada. I'm very scared. Look how he perked up when I said that. You thought he was a nervous fan waiting to ask for a picture? Bro, are you serious? He had hokas on. He had hokas on. He has fucking uh, tactical pants, like pants that you can run around in. He's wearing a fucking jacket. No, I mean, it's just like he's got, it's not even like regular khakis either. As soon as I, as soon as I saw him standing around, I was like, yeah, this motherfucker is definitely a cop. He was also filming around too. Yeah, so smart. Bro, we keep banning this guy and he keeps coming with new sock accounts that he's already fucking created a while ago. My favorite thing is when people make their own sock accounts like in the same naming convention. Like Stormy Echoes or whatever. I ban the guy. Comes back with Stormy underscore five. Gonna ban him again. And he's gonna come in with Stormy underscore six. Yeah, so smart. Why is Israel wrong? They're defending their, their own country. The Hamas attack at first, so it's so obvious they defend themselves, you fucking idiot. They are defending democracy. You have some weird takes on democratic people defending themselves, you idiot. Oh, it's also not even a good talking point, brother. We've talked about this so many fucking times over, okay? You cannot do a democratic apartheid, okay? You can't be like, oh yeah, we're a democracy, and we've democratically decided that five million people have to be just forcibly squashed under the boot of the state doesn't work that way okay people are gonna inevitably resist against that kind of thing and also they are going to they're going to meet the violence that they are receiving on a daily basis damn this guy's good